Our Father, we are so happy to be in your house again. We thank you for the privilege of life. We thank you to know that you have kept us safely through another week. And you have brought us together again in your house just to worship you, to praise you, and to adore your wonderful name. We thank you, O God, that you, through your mercy, have seen it fit to keep us alive. And Lord, as we come, we ask that your word, as we listen, will take root in our hearts, and that we'll be changed for righteousness, for right living, for the purposes which you have died, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Be with us today, and be with us as we listen to your word. Hide me behind the old rugged cross, and help that oral will not be seen, but the word of God will be true to all today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is so wonderful to be in God's house again. You know, when we separate on a Sabbath and we come back together, it is such a wonderful feeling, isn't it? Yes. It makes us don't want to leave at all. Yeah. But, you know, we have to go back to the mundane things of life each time. We have to go to work. Well, school is on holidays now. But our children have to go to school, and all of these things have to happen because we are living still on this earth, right? But there's coming a day, there's coming a day that all of this will, will pass when we will be with our Lord never to part again. Amen? Are you looking forward to that, church? Yes, yes we are looking forward, forward to that. And that is why um, one of the things that I look forward to on a Sabbath is to come to church, where we meet with God's people. Together, we sing the same songs, we read the same scripture, we have the same discussions, and we are so happy together, talking about the goodness of God and the way he leads us and all of these things. It is good when we come together like this. Um, Brother Michael, thank you so much for, for that. You can see the display on the screen. Yes, you can see it. So today we are going to talk about Christian behavior. Christian behavior. If you notice, um, the, the, the clay is in the potter's hand, is it? Mm -hmm. The clay cannot tell the potter what to do, can it? No. So the potter, he shapes, he forms, recreates or creates whatever he wants with the clay. And then at the end, you see that beautiful, beautiful pot. And he's so careful. His hands are so careful to form from a lump of clay into that masterpiece at the end. And that is what God is doing with us. Amen? We are just clay in the potter's hand. For him to do with us what he will. So does Christian have a particular behavior? Or should we behave a certain way? <laughs> and I hear yes. The scripture says in Romans 1 verses 12 verses 1 and 2. As was ably read by Sister Kira. I beseech you therefore. Another word for beseech is what? Beg. I beg you. Therefore, I plead with you. Therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be he transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are called to be a godly people who think, feel, and act in harmony with the principles of heaven. For the spirit to recreate in us the character of our Lord, we involve ourselves only in things, those things 
which will produce Christ-like purity, Christ-like health and joy in our lives. This means that our amusement and our entertainment should meet the highest standards of Christian taste and beauty. While recognizing cultural differences, our dress is to be simple, modest, and neat, befitting those whose true beauty does not consist of outward adornment, but in the imperishable ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit. It also means that because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, we are to care for them intelligently. Along with adequate exercise and rest, we are to adopt the most healthful diet possible and abstain from the unclean foods identified in the scriptures. Since alcoholic beverages, tobacco, and irresponsible use of drugs and narcotics are harmful to our bodies, we are to abstain from them as well. Instead, we are to engage in whatever brings our thoughts and bodies into the discipline of Christ, who desires our wholesomeness, joy, and goodness. Christian behavior, the lifestyle of a follower of God. I need to remind us that Christian, the word itself, means to be like Christ. Simple. To be like Christ. So the lifestyle of a follower of God arises as a grateful response to God's magnificent salvation through Christ. Paul appeals to us. I beseech you. I beg you. I ask of you. By the mercies of God. And God is merciful, isn't he? Amen. He has always been merciful to us. That you present your bodies. Our monies and whatever else we bring. Sometimes, well, let me just say it. It is, it is insignificant as it relates to what our bodies must be. Because if we come with our tithe, if we come with our offerings, all the monies that we can afford to give to the church. If we give, um, the, the, the basket is outside right now, collecting food, stuff, and all this. If we give everything, if we give our, even our bodies to be burnt, and we have not presented ourselves as this living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service, then we are wasting our time. So Paul, the book of Romans, has beseeched us. So Christians willingly protect and develop their mental, physical, and spiritual faculties in order that they may honor their creator and redeemer. It is our responsibilities. It is nobody else's. Not even the church's responsibility. But as individuals, as we take on the name Christ, we have a responsibility to do what is necessary to please Christ. Yes, the church must abide by the principles and foster good relationships and all of these things. But if you are in a place where the church is not doing it, are you going to allow your soul to perish because of a system that has gone away from the principles of Christ? Christ prayed in John 17. Book of John 17 is one of the prayers that Jesus prayed before leaving this earth. That he prayed not for God his Father to take us out of the world. Because we have to live here. We have to do his bidding. We have to be witnesses for him here. And we can't be witnesses to anybody at all or to anything if we have not done what God has asked us repeatedly to do. So he says, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. Amen? Keep them from the evil one. This world, this world as it is, 
I was saying to some of this week, uh, we're talking about a pilot. Did you all know that um, when you get on that aircraft, you don't know what is happening behind that door? But for, um, for those, Billy and um, Alex, uh, those who have been in the, um, the Army or whatever the case is, you have a little understanding of what the Air Forces do or a pilot does. Sometimes the pilot gets up from the thing and he's gone to the bathroom. And it's an um, autopilot. You ever, you ever hear about autopilot, right? It's an autopilot, and you don't know what is happening there. So I was saying that the, the, the hardest thing to keep in the air is a helicopter. Because the person that is flying the helicopter cannot let go of the spindle. If he let go of the spindle, it, uh, it's a nope that right away. It's coming right down. But the aircraft, design, once it goes up, level off, Pilot can get up. But for us as Christians, we should look at our lives as the helicopter. We cannot never ever be an autopilot. Never. Because the enemy of our souls, he's waiting for that opportunity. Waiting for the prime time to get at us. And as we discussed in our lesson this morning, we cannot allow for anything at all to come between us and God. Sister Marcia gave her testimony about the time that you set with God for your devotion. And all of us have our times that we set with God. And all of us at some point have missed our time with God. But we need to understand that God has never missed an appointment with us. We must have that respect for him. The God of the universe. The one whom angels bow before sinless beings. In Isaiah, as it was said this morning, that in Isaiah chapter 6, the angels with six wings, two cover the feet, two cover the face, two they used to fly because they understand how awesome the presence of God is. But sometimes we as sinful, feeble, weak human beings try to display a God as if to say he is our equal. As if he's a God is not a commoner. And we have to stop treating God as if we can move him from the place of being the almighty God. Christ, our example, he lived on this earth, did he? The Bible says in Luke, Two verse 52, last verse, I think. He said he grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. He has never ever displeased his father. Never. At no time at all. And he is a sinless, spotless son of God. And he it is who died that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And he had so much reverence for his father. And we too must emulate that sort of reverence. That kind of place that God has that we must understand. That we are the ones who are reaching up to him. Even though he came down to bring us up. We must understand that we are just the clay. And he is still the potter. Our salvation is hinged on what Christ did. Nothing we can do to inherit salvation. It is hinged on what Christ did at Calvary. He is the one who died that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. So we have to understand that the place that we are, we have to ask each day, Holy Spirit, please fill me up. Take me from the position of degradation and lift me up to a height where God can use me. So our bodies, it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Not only the church, but individual Christian is a temple of the indwelling spirit. We are the ones who formulate the church. We are the church. When we leave this building, it's just a building. 
Yes, it is dedicated and sanctified and all these things to God. But without our presence and our voices lifting praise to God, it is nothing. We need to understand that. So we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we must not allow this temple to be corrupt. We must not allow our temple to move away from the things that God wants us to be or to do. Constantly, we must be praying. Constantly, we must be reading his word. Constantly, we must ask him for a new touch, a new desire to follow him, a new desire to serve him, a new desire to praise him. That's what we must be doing. This is the behavior that a Christian must have. As Christians, we are concerned with both spiritual, yes, and physical aspects of people's lives. Jesus, our pattern, healed every disease and sickness among the people. We have the same power. But we become so powerless because we have detached ourselves from the power source. This week, we, for those who heard about Ella John, we, 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 I'm sure we prayed, and I'm happy the report that came this morning that he's doing better, you know, and we just continue to pray and ask God, his hand of mercy to be on him, to touch him, and that is what the people of God must do when we are sick, any of us, the church should be praying. You don't need to ask what happened, just pray. That's the behavior of the Christian. As Christians, when we, when we have our devotions, we must pray for each other. Pray for, his, for the church. Pray that the church will move in the direction that God wants it to move. Because the enemy is waiting to bounce us off track. So our prayer life must be, must be one that is, that is impeccable. Ready all the time as soldiers in the army. Come on, we are not, we are not, we are not that set of jokers here, you know. Our weak people. We are called by the mighty hand of God. And we need to allow the world to understand and know that we are Christian by his love. We are Christian because he died and gave us his life. He has placed us. I, I heard Brother Clay this morning talking about his home, that his name is written on his gate or on his house. In heaven, that is the kind of conversation that we need to have. Heavenly conversations. Moving from the sin cursed earth. Yes, we are here working and doing what we have to do. But our minds, our thought processes must be heavenly. Not earthly. The reason why we are here, God says that yes, we must occupy until he comes. Until he comes. Because when death comes knocking at our door, that's it. So we have to be a people prepared. To meet him in peace. And that is why together we, we, we sing together. We pray together. We preach together. We eat together. And we do this as a practice. Because one of these days, you know, we are going to be in heaven, you know. Believe that church. Because God has promised that this is going to happen. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, you may be also. That's not an empty promise. That's not a joke promise. And we know from scripture that it is true. We have seen. We have read. And we have to believe. We have to believe. On the Mount of Transfiguration, you saw Jesus communicating with Moses and Elijah, who were present on this earth, human like us. And they are now in heaven. The Bible says it. But if you don't believe the Bible, you won't believe that. But I believe the Bible, and I believe that. I believe that Enoch walked with God, the Bible says, and was not. He did not see death. He never tasted death on this earth. Because he walked with God and Enoch was 300 and years old. And he was walking with God. None of us have reached 
there in terms of years. And the short space of time that we have, we, we are complaining about serving. Come on, church. Come on. We have shorter time to praise God. Enoch was 300 years old, and he was praising God every day to the extent that God saw in him perfection and took him from this earth. That's what the Bible says. And it is true. So as Christians, we have to understand that this God that we serve is a God that promises and keeps his promise. So we talk about health. And that's why we have to take care of our bodies in the church. Because the body, our bodies is a vehicle that God uses to carry his message across the world. Did you know that? Hello? Yeah, I, I couldn't be here. I, could, you couldn't be hearing me if my body wasn't here. I'm standing here in bodily form talking to us. And that's what God needs for us to present ourselves to him. So we can preach his word and so on. So we have to be healthy as best as is possible. Amen? Amen. So we need to use the things that God has given us um, to create in us that kind of healthfulness. And this church has everything that you need um, at the North Bay Church. And every first Sunday there is, um, there is eat to live. <laughs> you know? And some of us really eat to die, but we have eat to live here. <laughs> So you can come here and learn how to eat healthy food, you know, and that is very good. We have the blessing of sunlight that God created in Genesis 1, verse 3, let there be light. And we have the blessing of sunlight that gives us nutrients too. We have water, we have fresh air, and we are temperate in all things. We talk about drug and all these things. Yes, there are medication that... Um, are prescribed by doctors to alleviate pain where sickness is concerned. You know? But sometimes these medications have side effects that, you know, create other things. So it is best if we stay away from them. You know? But if you are sick and you need it, you need it. It's as simple as that. But sometimes even in our own lifestyle, we create these kind of sicknesses too, by what we eat, how we dress, how we live. So tobacco, we don't even have to talk about that because we don't smoke here. Same in the church. We don't smoke. <laughs> we don't smoke here. You have other religion who think that they can smoke and still serve God. That's nonsense. So in any form at all, any form, tobacco is not good in any form. So we don't need to talk about that. Alcoholic beverages, not good at all for us. It clouds the brain. It shortens your memory. And we, we have memory texts that we have to have in our heads. True? So if we, if we take in alcohol, we can't come Sabbath morning. And when Brother Billy or me stand here and we say we are going to quote um, Exodus 20 or the memory text for the week and so on and so forth. If you, are, if you have anything else that impairs the thought, the thought processes, it can be a problem. So we need to take these things out. Amen? Take them out completely so that we can be true to God as the needle is to the pole. This morning we spoke in, 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 in our study about the media. And we talk about the ills of it and the goodness of it. I believe with all my heart that God has given humanity in general the ability to create things on this earth that will help us to promulgate the gospel message. However, we need to understand that the enemy is trying to use the same source to create degradation, to create all kind of differences as it relates to wholesomeness. He doesn't want to be, us to be wholesome enough. He's coming from a place of, of holiness. He has given up that, never to attain it again. Lucifer 
has given up his position to be holy. He will never be holy again. Lucifer will never set his foot in the heavenly Canaan again. Never. Because he has given that up. Do you think he wants us to go there? No. And that is why we need to understand that the kind of movies that we watch, the kind of television shows, what we listen to on radio, we need to understand if it is not wholesome, if it is not pleasing to God, we must give it up. The, the, the television is, is known as the one-eyed giant. <laughs> you ever heard that before? You ever heard the term before? It is known as the one-eyed giant. And if you allow that, no matter how sleepy you are, no matter how sleepy you are, you can sit up and watch a movie. On the other side, even when you just wake and you don't want to sleep, Sometimes you pick up the Bible to read it and you start falling asleep. So things that are wholesome for us, things that are good for us, most of the times are the things that we are not doing. Paul says every time I try to do good, evil presents itself before me. And we talk about this morning reading our, our Bibles and and, and the quarterly on our gadgets, on the phone or on the laptop or wherever. And as you start to read, nothing comes up on the screen. But as you open the screen and open the Bible, something pops up that you don't want to see. You have no intentions of reading the news, whatever. And we, we, are, we are saying that the thing can be good. It can be a news that is good. Whatever is happening in the country. Or a family member, or whatever the case is. Sister Marcia spoke about the fact that you, sometimes you, your, your phone is there. And people don't ready to text you or message on your phone until you start reading the Bible on the phone. The phone will be there, quiet, silent, nothing is happening. And you pick it up now to read your Bible on it. And all of a sudden, a family member starts texting you. It's as, if they, it's as if they saw when you picked up the Bible. But I'm saying that's how the enemy works. As the enemy working. But as a, as, a, as a means of our Christian behavior and attitude towards God, I, 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 I submit to you that if you pick this up and turn the pages, you won't have any pop-ups, really. But if, if that's what you have, if it's your laptop you have or your phone you have to read the Bible, Sister Marcia gave a very good um, way of doing that, is to go on airplane mode so that it shuts out everything else. And that's who we are as Christians. When it comes on to God, we must shut out everything else. There's a song that we sing, I think it's in um, number, hymn number 322. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. Not of this world, delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. And we can't allow anything at all to come between us and God. So the television, if it is coming between you and God, throw it out. Not, not, not literally, you know, because you, you, you use money to buy it. Right, Billy? <laughs> but because there are wholesome things that you can have on there. Amen? But the concept of these things, we have to minimize as much as possible. The things that takes our attention away from God. That's all I'm saying. And if it is, if it is going next door to talk to your neighbor... That is taking away your time or attention from reading your Bible, studying your Bible, and praying to God. You need to minimize the time you spend with your neighbor. Or bring your Bible to your neighbor and have Bible study. Because sometimes conversations can take us away from what matters. And we need to allow ourselves, you know, to come back. The, the concept of music. We have a lovely, a lovely, lovely music here. It is this, this book. When you sing these songs, friends, well, trust me, it brings you closer to God. 
him number one. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Talking about creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, now to his temple draw near. Join ye in glad adoration. That's beautiful. Isn't it? All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise him. Hallelujah. That's beautiful. Number 10, come Christians, join to sing. Hallelujah. Amen. Loud praise to Christ, our King. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a verse that says, that line that says, He is our guide and friend. To us, he'll condescend. His praise shall never end. Hallelujah. Amen. And number 15, I think, is a favorite of a lot of people. My maker and my king. To thee, my all I owe. Thy sovereign bounty is a spring when all my blessings flow. Come on, church. We have it. We have what we need to be close to God. And as we sing, we read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And the light he called day darkness, he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Genesis 1, 1 to 5. I'm saying we have the ammunition to kick, to, to fight the devil. We have it, friends. So when we sing the songs of Zion and we read the word of God, it brings us, it, it elevates us. It elevates us. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. Philippians 2, 8, I think. Which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm saying we have what it takes. And God has not left us without information. He has given us what we need to be on this journey. And if you think you miss it, during the course of the week, when you come to church on Sabbath morning, it is here. Holiness of divine, the divine presence. It is here, if you miss it. It says, the Lord is in his holy temple at all the earth. Keep silence before him. Habakkuk 2 verse 20. And the, 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 the thing says here, from the sacredness which was attached to the earthly sanctuary, Christians may learn how they should wear the Lord meets or be where the Lord meets with his people. There has been a great change, not for the better, but for the worst in the habits and customs of people in reference to religion, religious worship. The precious and sacred things which connect us with God are fast losing their hold upon the minds and hearts and are being brought down to the level of common things. You can read the rest. It's in your bulletin. And I'm saying to us. I, I am not a commoner. Speaking about me. I am not a commoner. And I know that. Because I'm, I, I'm called by the name of Christ. And he is the creator of this universe. That's how the, you, you can't get higher than him. At all. And we are his people. We are the sheep of his pastor. Aren't we? So we are not common people. I I'm telling you that. The Bible says in, in Revelation um, 12, 17, here is the patience of the saints. Here, here's who we are. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's who we are. That's who we are. And we belong to him. And we can't afford for anything else to captivate our minds. I won't talk about unclean foods because we don't eat unclean foods. And let me just, let me just say this without reservation. The, 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 <laughs> the best meals I have, the best meals I have during the course of the week is, is at church. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Curtis. For supporting me with that amen. The best meal I have is on a Sabbath night when I'm at church, when I have potluck. Because during the course of the week, I, I, am, I am a rice and chicken man. 
and, and, and the, the, the more we can get away from fleshly food, and, I, and I'm saying that, and I eat chicken, I eat fish, and the more we can get away from that, it's the better it is for us. Flesh was never a part of our diet. Let's go to the Bible. Start with Genesis 1, verse 29 to 31. Are you there? Genesis 1. I'm going to go to just verse 29 to the end. It says here, And God said, Who said? God. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And not only us, but verse 30 says, And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the year, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. And the Bible says, It was so. Last verse says, and God saw. I love that. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning, or the sixth day, that ends creation as it relates to humanity. Where we live, what we eat, and even how we dress. Did you know that Adam and Eve were clothed? With the righteousness of God. Hmm? Can't want better clothing than that. It was sin that caused him to sow fig leaves and all these things. Sin that caused us to know, have other dress and other clothes. But they were clothed with the righteousness of Christ. The savings on the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And that's where the Sabbath now was created. The beautiful day. That we have here today. So God expects us as Christians to live in a way that elevates us above everybody else. And yes, yes, if you are if, if a man does not know God, you are in a better position than him. That makes you better than him. And that is why you have to go to him to tell him what better life is. That's what God calls us to do, to be witnesses for him. Amen? Amen. So we don't, we don't need to be afraid or, uh, or shy about who we are or whose we are. If we are called by the name of God, we have to present ourselves in that way, in that light. To let the world know that I have been touched by the hand of God. So take the world, but give me Jesus. Or as we sang this morning, give me the Bible. Or as we sang in the first one, I will be their Savior, holy thine. Teach me how, teach me how. I will do thy will, O Lord, not mine. And with his help, we can do it. So Christians win unbelievers. I want you to listen to this. I listen to this carefully as I, as, I, as I wind down. Christians win believers, not by looking and behaving like them. Too much times we want to behave and look like the world. And that's why we can't sing songs like, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. We can't sing songs like that because we want to be like the world. And there's another song that says, Lord, I'm coming home. These are songs that we must sing, Joshua. And that's why, you know, everybody know my favorite song. Well, one of. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There a precious fountain free to all. A healing stream. Near the cross, I'll watch and wait, hoping, trusting ever. Till I reach the golden strand just beyond the river. Near the cross, O Lamb of God, bring its scenes before me. Help me walk. Help me walk. From day to day. With its shadows over me. So we can't. Look like. Behave like. The world. 
and then try to win the world. So we should not fit in. But by revealing an attractive and refreshing difference, Peter said, may we, may we be won by the conduct of the lives that we live. And as we live a life that is pleasing to God, it becomes easier to teach people how they should behave and what the principles of God and the principle of heaven is. And everybody know how I view even Christianity. Because Christian means, still means to be like Christ. As his custom was, it says in Luke 4.16, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood afar to read and found it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach. That's Jesus who lived on this earth for 33 and a half years. He was at church, in church, like us, every Sabbath. So we are Christians because we obey what he says. I can't speak for anybody else. And I make no apology when I say that. Because if we don't follow the principle, and God spake all these words saying, not me, not Curtis, not Ella Shanahan, not Ella Wyatt, not the elders, not the pastor, Pastor Omar, and, and not the deacons or deaconesses, Billy and, 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 and others. Not us, but what God says, and that's what we must be obedient to. And I, and I made no apology about that. And that's why I said, here is the patience of the saints. The Bible says in, 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 in Revelation 14, 12, here are they that keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus. One says have the testimony, one says have the faith. And Revelation 19, 10 tells us what it is. That the faith of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. We can't deviate from that. The devil is not upset with anybody else. Apart from us. And that's what the Bible says. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments. And as I quoted from Revelation 12, 17 earlier on, the dragon was upset, angry with the woman and the remnant of her seed. The church and the remnant of the church, which is us, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. Revelation 22, the last chapter, verse 14 says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. That's what the Bible says. Verse 15 says, For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and who love it and make it a lie. That's what the... Let's go to Revelation. Revelation 22. And I'm going to just stop right here. Talking about Christian behavior. When we go to our place of work, whatever they say in that workplace governs us. We can't deviate from the, from the principles of the workplace at all. Every workplace has their principles and their rules, their laws, their regulations. And if we deviate from those, we are fired. Am I right, church? Good. So the king of heaven, the king of the universe, the god of the universe, he does not have standard. He does not have no, he have no standards for us to abide by. He has no principles for his people. So we can do, go, and be what we want to be. That is nonsense. The Bible don't teach us kind of nonsense. The Bible teaches us how we should behave. How we should operate. Because we belong to God. And if the Bible have principles, we must abide and follow those principles. But we are more into following what man says than what God says. But this church... All of us who, in, who sit here today, I'm saying to us, we know who we are and whose we are. So, the Bible says in Revelation 22, as I was saying, verse 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter into the gates into the city. Verse um, 15 says, For without our dogs. Are you a dog? No. Let me answer quickly. For without our dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and make it a lie. 
the lie that was told in Genesis is still being followed by a lot of people who call themselves Christians today. The conversation was, hath God said? Lucifer asked Eve the question. Did God say? Yes, he said. Full stop. So we don't need to be in a conversation with God. We just need to use the word of God, apply the principles of Christ, and let the world know that we are Christians by the love that God has placed on our lives. Christians in union with the Savior have but one ideal, that they shall do their best to honor the Heavenly Father who has provided such a rich plan for salvation. Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the honor and glory of God. Thank you for watching our videos. If you like it, click here to watch another. Remember to subscribe and to share it with others so they can hear the gospel as well. God bless you.